Behind the scenes, I've been working on getting a small blacksmith setup so that I can start to make my own polyth hooks and small knives and things like that. So what you're looking at here is actually me testing out the first lathe hook that I have forged myself. So what we're going to do in this video is talk about this tool a little bit in comparison to my other tools, which I know are good quality, and talk about some of its strengths and some of its drawbacks. It's a single bevel hook with the bevel on the inside, but it's double-edged, so I filed an edge on both sides so that, theoretically, you can use this tool as both a tip-up and a tip-down tool, and that has its advantages as well as its drawbacks, which I'll explain a little bit later. For now though, you can see it's doing a good job roughing out this bowl, like it definitely takes a cut and it definitely leaves behind a smooth finish. Most of my issues with the tool so far are more to do with like the ergonomics of using it. It's quite tricky to, to keep it on the wood just right, whereas I feel some of my other tools are a lot more natural to hold correctly, and you'll see that when um, the footage comes up of me using the other ones. You're about to get a look at the shape of the hook as I forged it. It's made from 12mm spring steel round bar. You can see my setup here, I've got a small gas refractory brick forge, and instead of spending money for a real anvil, I've just mounted a sledgehammer into a block. The biggest limitation here is that because of the size of my improvised anvil, I'm not able to use a larger hammer to move the metal a little bit more quickly and efficiently. So it took quite a bit of hammering to make this tool, but it was definitely not the worst thing I've ever done. Please note, if you are going to use an improvised anvil like this, you need to wear some eye protection, as there is a risk of metal shards flying off from the hardened surface. So you can see me just flip the tool around and then use the exact same hook to cut in the tip down orientation for starting the core of the bowl. And what we're about to see is some of the issues that I have with this hook only really show up when you start to try to use it to hollow a bowl. So it's cutting nicely but it's a little bit catchy and it does have one major issue for me which is that the back edge will cut, catch on the return stroke if you don't lift the hook out of the wood enough. And I'm not in the habit of doing this because I have learned how to turn using single edged hooks. So we're about to see one, and you'll see that my tool rest is going to jump up as the hook catches on the return stroke. There we go. And this continued to happen as I was turning the inside. Now I believe if you put the practice in to using one of these double-edged tools, that that problem would kind of go away. And it is really efficient having both uh, functions in the one tool. So the shavings I'm taking are good, but I'm not getting the kind of smooth cut that I expect. Like the it's it's the stability of the tool that is that is not there. Um, it's definitely sharp, and the edge geometry seems correct, but it's kind of jumping around in the bowl. And the contrast is going to be really clear when I show you the other hook in terms of just how much additional stability there is from the extra mass of the material. Don't get me wrong, this is still a good tool, and for my first try I'm very happy. So I'm going to pick up my other tip-up hook, and straight away you'll notice how much more material there is in the bar. This one is forged from a car spring, and it's uh, like about twice the diameter of the hook that I forged myself. I just wanted to mention that it's quite possible that instead of comparing the tools themselves, I'm just comparing my experience with one to my experience with the other. Like, I've turned dozens of bowls with this tool in particular, and it could be I just know how to use it better. 
Having said that, I, I do feel that my impressions are valuable and, and show like the differences in function between the two. And do you see how it's really stable? It's not jumping around inside the cut like the other hook was. I'm able to trace an arc with it and sort of curve, curve in the walls of the bowl in an elegant way with just one smooth movement. Okay, here's my hook again, and I'm going to try and smooth the inside of the bowl. It's doing a good job turning the rim, and a catch here can be really bad news for the bowl, so that's great. But as I'm starting to get further into the bowl, it's, in a, it's starting to to dig in a bit too much and I think that the edge angle on this one is just a little bit more aggressive than on my other hook. So you can see I've made a big step there where that's not usually how I turn that area and I'm gonna see if I can clean it up. It looks thinner than it is because this is jacaranda, it's a light wood. It, um, get, it goes translucent when it still has quite a bit of thickness left in it. And here you can see just how irritating that little catch and dig on the return stroke can be. So I'll put a fresh edge on my good hook now and do the final finish on the inside of the bowl. And it's it's just remarkably easier with the additional mass of the tool. I've got quite a bit of the metal stock that I used to make that first hook, so I'm going to make a few more like that. But I think I will try with single edged hooks instead of double edged because the additional weight behind the tip I think would be nice. Coming in for what is hopefully the final pass now. I like to finish the hollowing of a bowl going straight from the rim all the way to the core. Now I'll just need to turn down the core and snap it out, and you'll see how that goes. Here's the tip-down hook of the set that Liam made for me. I'm going to make a silly mistake here and turn the core too close to where the mandrel tenon goes in. Wait for it. So that's not actually a big deal. Um, it's just going to be a bit of extra wood for me to carve out of the bottom. 
uh, that you can see how the core is snapped out. That's happened to me a few times. And here's a look at the finished bowl. I'm definitely going to spend some more time forging hooks, and I hope you found this useful. I'll see you in the next one.